What's up YouTube? My name's Cricky, welcome back to the channel. It's still Wednesday the 28th, if you've just seen the last video. I've just done my update video, just cause, you know, stuff needed updating. <laughs> and now I get to crack on and get the work done. Um, so what were you? Oh, you were a flathead or a posse, it doesn't really matter. So now we're just cracking on and getting work done. Which is what I'm in here for anyway. So um, the next job I think is going to be, if I can just get these off, because I don't want to put holes in them. Uh, the next job is going to be sorting out this plating across here. Um, I'll show you what I mean a bit more in a minute, but I just want to get this, I shouldn't have put these on. But I really wanted to see what those are going to look like. Um, so yeah, we need to get this bit plated in just so I've got somewhere to start mounting stuff. Um, Cause underneath here, we're obviously going to have M unit and start solenoid and blah, 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 blah. As well as wiring and all that sort of stuff and a few earthing points. And we just need to sort of, you know, get it done basically. Um, if I get this bit here plated in, which at the minute is just a big hole. Um, it's going to keep an awful lot of weather and everything else off the back tire from getting into electrics and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it also defines the amount of space I've got to start stashing stuff away and how I'm going to mount it all. So underneath here we're going to have M unit, start a solenoid, then we've got to have a seat release um, and the seat catch and everything else for however that's going to go. We've got the battery, I want space for a, um, an iPhone charging point and a cradle for an iPhone or whatever else it is that you've got. It all needs to kind of go in there, so this bit needs to happen. However, first, I need to grind down some of these welds, because these are a bit lumpy. Right. So we have, uh, well, I've spent like a couple of hours actually. <laughs> Take bloody ages grinding. Um, especially when you're trying to get into all the nadry little bits with like a ball die grinder. These things are brilliant actually. For getting in all those little nooks and crannies and stuff, this is brilliant because you want to have some sort of radius on it. The only trouble is the way you're going in with this, you then can't go in with that finger sander thing. Where is it? This jobby. Because um, the radius to the end of that is too big. But I should be able to get in there with the, the mini DA and dress it all up and, you know, once it's all finely together. For now, I think we're probably good enough so I can start mocking up a template. Oh, <laughs> oh I hate it when that happens. <laughs> right, I'll be back. Right, stupid bloody packets. <laughs> I would imagine half of these little sachets of coffee end up on the floor in it. Anyway, um, yeah, so I think I've gone far enough with the grinding for now and all the dressing up and whatnot, just so I can start mocking up that base and get a, you know, quite a nice decent fit. I did blob the weld on it, as to be say, it was piled on there, so I did have quite a lot to take off. Um, but the trouble is I can't get into all the bits and pieces to do it properly. Because I want to basically have the frame and turn it upside down. You sort of grind it upside down like this. It's not ideal. So we're just going to crack on and get as much as we done can. Um, and then when it comes to taking the frame out and do banging, <laughs> taking the frame out and doing all those welds and you know all that sort of stuff, then I'll be able to put it where I want it and grind it up properly. So I need a bit of card, um, and I used all my thin card. Uh, what have we got? I want some thin card. I've got a Christmas card. It, oh, hello, there goes my magnet. Oh. Well, I've got a Christmas card from Monkey Allen. Uh, it's not big enough. <laughs> That's the sort of card I want, but I haven't got any. Um. I've got cardboard, which isn't ideal. 
suppose we could have a go with that, couldn't we? Um, what have we got? Not gonna work? No. <laughs> right then. Uh, all right, so we're doing it the nasty way. It's just a rubbish way of doing it. Um, which line? Right, it'll do for a start. We just have to keep trimming. Uh, this is going to be done in two pieces, so there is going to be a join down here. That bit I'll do as a separate bit, and I can curve that. I've got a bit of tube down there somewhere, or the fire extinguisher, or something, but I'll curve that round there. But this is the one that needs to be a bit of a better fit, so we'll go just outside. don't like doing it this way. I need some thinner card. Um, I do need some thinner card. Because this has got to fit up really nicely underneath it. Which this ain't going to. It needs to be a little bit less. We could do it on the top I suppose, but Ideally, what I want to be able to do is put a piece of card on here, thin stuff, and then rub it with a bit of um, alley so I get an outline. That will give me the top, top side of this tube, and then we're stepping it in very slightly, just such that when the, uh, the sheet metal is placed on it, it's flush across the top, so you get like the top of the tube, and then the sheet, and then the other top of the tube, and it's all in one line. This stuff ain't going to do. Um, I need to go and get some card, didn't I? Hey, 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 hey. Because I'm going to need to notch these bits out where the side rails go. Oh, I need a bit of tidying up there. Um, so I need to notch those out as well. And then we're going to need to notch it out for the front. What have I got? I must have something. No. Well, I want a bit of card. <laughs> Paper ain't going to do it. I need card. Um, right. I've searched high and low. The only card that I've got is Christmas card <laughs> from Mr. Allen. Uh, but it's not big enough. But that's the ideal sort of stuff. It's stiff enough that it holds its shape. But it's thin enough that you can do an impression just by rubbing it like a brass rubbing type thing. Um, cardboard is just rubbish for this sort of stuff, so I'm not using it. I have to go and get some card on the way home. Um, so what am I going to do? I suppose I could have a crack at getting that. I don't really need to do them yet, though. But I don't want to do anything down here because I'm going to be welding over there. So I really want a job that I can do on the front end. I could shove the brakes on. Well, I could start on my headlamp mount. Let's um, let's do that. Right, headlamp mounts.
is in, I think. It's the first two pretty much done anyway. Um, you are missing a little bit of machining. That's because it is dodgy as hell what I'm doing. <laughs> I haven't got a steady rest, but the diameter of this means I've got to do the outside jaws. So I'm only grabbing hold of a very little bit on the end of it. So uh, essentially I machined up this bung. Um, so that is, I mean, you have to knock it in and you have to knock it out. <clears throat> but it basically makes it solid, so I can proper clamp down on it with the, with the chuck. But it means I've got all that sticking out. So to get the ends trued up, because the bandsaw for some reason, it's not cutting straight. <laughs> really annoying. And it's not even like it's off at an angle, it kind of does this wobble to it. So it's either belt tension or something like that, but the belt is seriously worn, you know, the blade. I do need to get another one and I need to put coolant on it. So um, I'm having to true it up on the lathe because I, I don't want this all wibbly wobbly at the end. <laughs> but if you see the difference, I mean, you know, it sort of comes up all right, I suppose. Where are you? Can you see? Hopefully, anyway. So we just cleaned it up on a scotch Bright wheel. Um, that'll be all right for now. Um, I'm still undecided what finish to do these. I need to stick it all on and see what it looks like. But time is getting on. You might be able to tell it is starting to get dark and I need to chip off. Um, I will be back in here again tomorrow. We get the other one done, get them both the same length and then we can do the, the end caps to it and you know sort out my headlamp mount. So anyway, until I get a piece of paper or card, actually I could get that on the way in tomorrow. But then I'll have two jobs on the go. No, I'm, I'm doing these. I'm finishing these. <laughs> so anyway, I'll be back. Right, I'm back. <laughs> I've got some card. Um, it's now Thursday. Why am I checking my watch again for the day? Um, it's now Thursday. Uh, I've got some cards so I can do the template for the back, but I'm not doing that. I'm carrying on with the, these bits. Um, I've also got a fuel filter for the van. Um, it's never had one. <laughs> I can't see anything that says when it is ever had one. Um, but it did that thing again where it cut out and it was again a fuel pressure thing. So I figured, well, it could be just as simple as the fuel filter that's blocked. So um, exactly the same code and I've changed that sensor. So we're going for that next, but that's gonna have to wait because it's still tipping it down with rain. Um, what else is gonna say? Yeah, so I'm gonna carry on with this lot. I've still got another one to do and then I've got the Delrin inserts with the O-rings to do and the little brackety bit. So I'm just cracking on with that because I don't want to have lots of like unfinished jobs. I just want to do one job and then move on to the next one. Um, so that's what I'm doing today and hopefully I'll get it done. But there you go. Oh yeah, on another note, they're not pink, they're salmon. <laughs> to be fair, they used to be red, but they've been washed an awful lot. Right, let's um, do this. Right, so I've got two of them that's done. And I've just given it a clean up on the Scotch Bright as well. Um, they are not exactly the same. There's like 0.2 difference basically. Um, but because of the way I'm having to hold it in the chuck, it is dodgy as hell, it really is. And I'm not filming that bit, just because I don't want anybody copying it basically. Um, essentially, there is very little that I can grab hold of on here. So I ended up making a plug, which I've knocked in the end so it's a bit more solid, but I'm still only grabbing hold of, you know, a little bit just because of the way the jaws are on the chuck. But we've basically got them squared off or as close as I'm ever going to get it, basically. Um, it was all dialed in and that, so it's not going to be far off. I measured them up and there's 0.2 difference, so that's all fine. Uh, I've also done a little chicken sketch of what the inserts are going to be, which is going to go top and bottom. Um, making them out of this stuff. Um, right, this is Delrin. I think Delrin's actually the brand name. But basically it's an engineering plastic. Um, really, really, really easy to machine. Um, and they do all sorts of different plastics for different applications. Like some are good under load, but if you want something to slide over top of it, can't remember the name of it, but that's the green one. And yeah, I mean, there's like a whole load. Delrin will be fine for this. Um, so what I need to do is to make four of these. 
Um, I was hoping to be able to put some O-rings um, top and bottom on each of the inserts just to stop any weather and stuff getting in there, but I'm not gonna have the clearance. Just, I ain't gonna have it. So, um, which is not really gonna be a problem. I mean, these are stainless. Um, that's plastic. I mean, you know, <laughs> if anything does get in there, it's not gonna do any harm, but we'll just make sure there's a good overlap to it um, to help prevent it. And we will get the tightest fit we possibly can do. And we just go from there. So, back to the lathe. <laughs> So that's the first bit done. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Um, the the little black Delrin bit that you see, it sort of ties in with the, you know, with the dust seal and the surround on the speedo and all that sort of stuff. So it is quite cool. I was thinking of putting another one up there, but that's just going to drop the drop the clip-ons even more. Where's my headlamp? Um, here we go. So, next bit is I just need to work out some little plates to go on here. So, E is going to sit in like that pretty much. We've got a gap there for the throttle cables to move about. But E wants to be about there. Where's my measuring stick? Ruler! Where are you gone? Right. So, if he's going to go about like that, Ish. Are you even? Sort of. Right, so whole centres for these mounting points wants to be about 45 out, I reckon. So he's going to go like that. Maybe 50, all right. 50 mil. Um, so the next thing is, do I want them to go level there and then down, or just like up and down the 
up and down it would sort of follow the top and bottom yoke really wouldn't it? Whereas if I was to have it level No, I think level would be better. Right, okay. Right, I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, top angle is 27 degrees, which is the same as the rake. So when this is sitting on the bike, the top of this bracket is gonna be, hopefully, parallel to the ground and the bottom of the frame. So that's all good, because I don't, I don't really want it all just sort of sticking up, because it would look a bit daft. So if I level it out, like that, Actually, he wants to go down just a tad. About like that. So, if he's leveled out and the headlamp is basically facing forwards and down just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, I've probably got, well, there's under 10 mil clearance between this little lump on the, the headlight and the bottom yoke, which is fine, because he is tilted down just a little bit. And if I move it up, obviously, I'll get a little bit more. I've got probably 40 mil of daylight between the bottom of the speedo housing and the top of this. And probably 25 between the back of the bowl and the steering stem. So I don't think we're going to get it any closer than that. Not without risking something. So that's what I'm going to do. I might make it, you know, the profile a tiny bit smaller. Um... If I do, it ain't going to be much because they're the size of the fixings and that's the size of the washer that's going to be on it. And you, you want a little bit of poking out, don't you? Just a little bit. <laughs> right. So, um, I don't think I'm going to need to have any bends in it. I could just do them straight and then weld them on. Um, it's going to be a bugger to dress down stainless though. So the welds on these might still be shown. <laughs> 
<laughs> which means I've got to do them nicely. Um, bum, 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 bum. How thick's that plate? Let me have a quick look. Uh, where'd I put it? Oh yeah. No, that's not it. Oh, where are you gone? I had it. I've seen it. Where is it? Right, so two mil thick. Okay, and it's only like a little 50 mil bit, and this is pretty bloody, pretty tough stuff. So I reckon we're going to be all right just with a flat bit, with the old drilled in, and weld it all on. I reckon that'll be fine. Um, I am going to need to get on the angles right though. That's going to be the tricky bit. <laughs> I might actually do a little spacer um, like I did for the for the rear sets, just so I can offer it up and get it all lined up without having a flaming headlamp in the way. But anyway, that's going to have to wait until tomorrow because it's getting on and I need to chip off. So I'll be back. <laughs> 